Yo, what up, y'all? Preach Christ to die. That's Chance. I ain't made a video in a minute. But I had to make one about this. Ruslan, Alan Parr, Marcus Rogers. The situation on tongues. Uh, because that's one of the main subjects I see in the body of Christ today. That, 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 that it's, it's harmful. It's harmful because I believe the body of Christ, is, they... they, they they think it's no big deal and we play with it, right? When if we don't get this right, if we don't get this part of doctrine right, it can cause a lot of division. Well, it's already causing division, but it can set people back like this. Because I'm surprised, and even in my own life, I know a lot of believers who claim to have the gift of tongues. They claim to have the gift of tongues, but I ask them, is this really what the Bible is talking about when it comes to tongues? Biblically and in context. Because if we're going to talk about it being biblically in context, you cannot tell me that the Bible is talking about gibberish. You can't say that it's talking about gibberish nowhere. And I, I know the verses, and I'm going to do a Bible study on 1 Corinthians again in other places. I know the parts of the Bible where they're trying to say that this is my angel talking. This is this is uh this is how we speak in to God in, in the spirit. But there is no evidence of this nowhere in the Bible that you have to come to God in this mythical, this this mystic voice that you have learned what except for your own language, right? Because if tongues is real, which I believe tongues is real, but it's a known language from in the Bible. A known language that you don't know so you can get the gospel out. So you can get the, get, get the gospel to somebody. Now, they have people who, and I'm surprised by this because I see a lot of people who you would think, man, these people are scholars. They, they teach these people how to break down the text, how to look beyond the text and see what's going on, and they get caught up on these verses, and I'm like, I understand getting caught up, I, I, I do, but that does not mean we just run with what we think. If you say that the book of Corinth, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, that they're talking about gibberish tongues, because of uh, chapter... 14 chapter 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 14 verse 2 is the only place in that chapter where you can say okay maybe but what does it mean okay and I'm gonna explain that when I do the uh, study on that but the rest of the chapter 14 Paul is talking to the Corinthians and he's telling them that they're doing everything wrong everything wrong He's not telling the Corinthians that they're doing a good job. He's saying that you're messing up on everything, even the gifts. And these gifts that people are saying you have to, if you don't do these gifts, then you're not saved. Let me ask you something. All these people who pray, that say that they pray in tongues. Is the gifts of the Spirit meant for you to benefit yourself? I don't hear no one talking about this. No one. If is the gifts of the spirit meant for you to benefit yourself? I'm not talking about the fruits of the spirit. I'm talking about the gifts of the spirit. Tongues is the gifts of, of the spirit. The gifts of the spirit is for you to witness to someone else. If you're not using that to witness to someone else, why do you even need it? Why do you are already blood bought, paid? Believer in Christ Saved going to heaven Why do you need to talk gibberish to God When you have the language That he has given you He's birthed you in a place To have this language For you to communicate with God Through that language Why are you saying that you have to Because the Bible says that Though I speak in the tongues of Of angels And I'm paraphrasing You know that he's not talking about that he really speaks in tongues of angels. He's speaking in hyperbole. 
for me, and you know that because of this, the, the, the sentence that he says next, right? He says, and though I can move all mountains, though I, I can do all these other amazing things, if you do not love, you have nothing. If you don't have charity, you have nothing. That's what he's saying. He's putting the emphasis on love. But they take that verse and they say, see, that's why he's saying that we can speak in angel talk. That's my heavenly language. If you're pulling that out of that verse, man, you playing loose with the text, man. You playing very loose with the text. Because the gifts of the spirit is for you to witness to a non-believer. It's not for you to edify yourself with. It's for you to witness to a non-believer so they can get the, get it. The gift of teaching is for you to have that to witness to someone else, to help someone else. You have the Holy Spirit in you already to help you, but they don't. So that's when, oh my goodness, man. I, I hear these things, and even with Alan Parr, Alan Parr, he got on the place, and, and I think he was talking about uh, chapter 14, verse 2, when he said, okay, I give you that. They are talking about tongues right there. They're not. Even if we are talking about tongues, that's not the same tongues that Marcus Rogers is talking about. He's talking about this gibberish stuff that comes over you. And get it? It comes over you. The spirit of the prophets is not subject or subject to the prophets. Meaning that that's, the, the Holy Spirit is not going to come over you and make you act crazy. And what's the next verse after that? I don't know it by heart, but I know it's. I'm gonna go through it when I get the when I stop and get the Bible. God is not the author of confusion. But we're going to say that the Holy Spirit is coming upon us and it's going to make us just do all these crazy... Hey, man, it's just, it's, it, we play too many games with the Holy Spirit. You see people when they get excited. I did it. I did it. I did it, man, when I was young. You get excited like, oh, man, I feel the Spirit. Is that the Spirit or did you just get excited? Well, how do you know you have the Holy Spirit? You know you have the Holy Spirit because you can understand the Word of God. You know you have the Holy Spirit because you are being convicted of your sin. You know you have the Holy Spirit because you have a desire for God's word. And if you don't, it bothers you when you don't. These are things that before you were saved, you had no problems with. Now, I'm not saying that the gifts of the Spirit is done away with. I'm not saying that. I don't think it's happening like it was back then. I believe, and, and, and the thing is, why were tongues in the Bible? What were tongues for? Tongues were a sign for unbelievers. Tongues were a sign for the Jews to know that these, the same way y'all got the Spirit, the same way that God, Jesus came and he showed y'all all these miracles. Look, it's happening right now with the Gentiles. Paul's going over there and he's, he's, he's doing all these miracles in front of the Gentiles. Peter's doing all these miracles in front of the Gentiles. At one time, Peter's shadow would heal people. Paul would leave his handkerchief behind and it would heal someone. But what happened? Paul, I think his friend named Trophimus, he had to leave him sick. What happened? Paul at one time was healing everyone at any moment. And he said, I had to leave him sick. Why? Paul couldn't heal him. Timothy, he said, Take a little wine for your stomach. Why couldn't Paul just say, say, you know the gift that we have. Heal him. Heal yourself. Or come here. I'll heal you. Nothing. Drink a little wine. Why? Because it's not time for that. That time is over with. And I'm not saying that God don't heal. I know he does. But not one or two people are walking around right now with the power of healing in their hands. God who heals who he sees fit to be healed. But we have to study real hard about these tongues. I have close friends. One of them, he says he don't talk in tongues. But he's in a group that does, a church that does. 
And he says that it's a good balance. They don't force him. And if that's the case, cool. But that's scary. That's scary. Because one, they, I don't know. I, just, I pray that that's the case. You know what I'm saying? That he could witness to them. And may, maybe, maybe. Because that's the thing. Okay, we're not, I've never been in a church where they really spoke in tongues. Right? Another language. Why you think Paul says, I wish we all spoke in tongues? Is he talking about, I wish we all had this utterance of gibberish that no one understands? No. He's saying, I wish you all spoke in multiple languages. Because if you speak in multiple languages, then it's easier to witness to every more people. Come on, y'all. But we're making it so mystical. We're making it so spirit, like 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 this is so spiritual that we can't, you cannot grasp this unless you're doing this act. Where, where in the Bible, y'all, people like Marcus Rogers, man, man, I like Marcus Rogers sometimes, man. But he he drives me nuts with it because I grew up in a church like that, right? Not grew up, but I got saved in a church like that where. Everything you do He's like Oh I see God moving in you And he did that with uh, Alan Parr And it's like Come on bro In everything In everything He's like Like one time I seen him He was like he, he He's like Man I'm walking down I'm walking And I look in the sky And I seen the branch move As I was looking And the sun came And that's God telling me A, B, and C Like for real? Is that? You know that? It's amazing to me, man. It's amazing to me. And I'm not saying God can't speak. But these people, man, it's so they make everything so spiritual. Everything so to where you it's hard to even have a conversation, right? Because they know more. And the thing is this, you could tell because of how loose they are with the scriptures. Nothing is in context. Nothing. Man, I'm nothing is in context. I was listening to that guy, and he was talking to Alan Parr, and he was saying, oh, ask this, and right here, and it's like, break down that part. Why are they get? why is that set up for them to be saved? What is God doing right there? When they're getting saved right there? Why is he allowing Peter to be with them? Why is he allowing Paul to be with them? Why is he doing... Dig deep in the scriptures And Alan Parr When it came to that chapter uh, 14 verse 2 I was stuck on chapter 14 verse 2 For about a couple years Because it sounds like They're talking about tongues But when you get into it And you see Oh that's what he means by that And now the whole chapter 14 fits At first Chapter 2 uh, Verse 2 Did not fit with the rest Of chapter 14 But this is Preach Christ to die Chance I'm going to be back In a few minutes To do a Bible study On chapter 14 Of 1 Corinthians Because I think It's so We have to stay on this We have to stay on this Because We have so many people In the body of Christ That When I seen Alan Paul I'm like Wow Even scholars Even people Who really went To Christian colleges Are not Familiar or don't have the answers to these scriptures. And listen, I know I don't have all the answers. I know. But on this one, I think I'm pretty sound on it. I do. Now, I'm not saying I am on... They have a lot of places that I'm not. But on this, on tongues... Man, I challenge anyone, man. I challenge anyone. Tell me I'm wrong on this one when I do the Bible study. But you have to do it in context of the whole Bible. It's like Marcus Rogers said... Oh man, the Bible's a puzzle. Yeah, but you have to know the scriptures to put them together. You can't just say, oh, it's a puzzle, and it fits here because it says this and it says this. I'm gonna give you one little example of how I heard somebody do it back in the day. Will a man rob God? Because you know the Bible says that if you rob God, if you if you steal, you go to hell. And in and in Malachi it says, Will I will, will, will you will you rob me of my tithes and offerings 
So that means that if you're not tithing, you're robbing. And the Bible says that in the New Testament that that uh, I mean in the Old and New Testament that thieves will not inherit the kingdom of God. That is so out of context. It ain't funny, but that's how they puzzle the Bible together. Preach Christ to die, y'all. Later.